Because here I am sitting there as a parent watching a perfectly healthy child be destroyed. And there's nothing I can do but sit on the sideline and according to Justice Bowden at the time, cheer it on. I could only affirm or get thrown in jail. For the past 11 months, Canadian father Robert Hoogland's now 15-year-old daughter has been receiving testosterone injections by court order. The process began in late February of last year when Justice Bowden of the British Columbia Supreme Court ruled that the then 14-year-old girl should be medically transitioned to a boy regardless of the wishes of either of her parents. While the girl's mother was willing to cooperate, her father was distraught. This will not change her DNA, she will not become a boy. It can lead to increased heart disease and, and, and other risks of that nature, different types of cancers. Because they're going to be stopping her puberty, her bone density will, will stop right where it is. And I kept saying, no, this is not going to happen, I'm not consenting. According to the courts, however, Rob's consent wasn't relevant. In fact, Justice Bowden went one step further, declaring that Rob and his wife had to affirm their daughter's new gender identity. Rob was told that if he tried to dissuade his daughter, or referred to her as a girl, he would be considered guilty of family violence. The night of the ruling, Rob granted an interview to the Federalist, lamenting the state-sponsored transition of his mentally vulnerable daughter. He also pointed out that his daughter was biologically a girl and would simply have her health impaired by high dosage testosterone. The interview infuriated the BC Supreme Court a few weeks later Justice Francesca Mazzari convicted Rob of family violence for using female pronouns. To make sure Rob didn't refer to his daughter as a girl again, Mazzari signed a protection order authorising the police to immediately arrest Rob without warrant if he was caught referring to his daughter as a girl or with female pronouns. And, and even in the, the Mazzari ruling, I mean, it, it said that I could only think thoughts that were contrary to what the Bowdoin ruling was. The court was gracious enough to say that they could not police my thoughts, essentially, but everything else they could. Rob kept quiet through the long months of 2019, hoping to get his daughter off testosterone in the Court of Appeal. But in January of this year, the highest court in British Columbia declared that Rob's daughter should continue taking testosterone. It also placed a conduct order on Rob, demanding that he continue to acknowledge and refer to his daughter as male and employ male pronouns. They've now created a delusion and then they're forcing parents like myself to have to live in this delusion. And then what happens when the bubble explodes and the delusion ends? She can, she can never go back to being a girl. I mean, she'll always be a girl, but she can never go back to being a girl in a healthy body that she should have had, right? She's going to forever have a lower voice. She'll forever have to shave because of facial hair. She won't be able to have children. She won't have a family. These kids don't, don't even understand what this stuff means. What kid who's 13 is thinking about a family and having children? Not many. Desperate to get his story heard, Rob gave several interviews to Canadian commentators and reporters. The interviews he gave were quickly suppressed in Canada and Rob was threatened again with severe consequences for speaking out. But Rob felt that he could not remain silent. You know, what kind of father would I be if, let's say in, in five, ten years, my daughter is detransitioning and she turns to me and says, you know, dad or mom, like, why did you, none of you do anything to stop this? I was a child, like, none of you stuck your neck out for me back then. You just let me do it because I was an immature kid thinking this was something great. Where were you on that one? When my daughter asked me that question, I'll say, you know, I did everything that I possibly could. There was nothing more I could do. And then when there was nothing more I could do, I continued on because I didn't want other parents to go through what I went through.